name is Eric Woodcock, and today we're going to take a look at Elk. That's your Elastic Log Stash Cabana stack. Working uh, in conjunction with the Palo Alto Firewall, we will be sending syslogs over to Elk. Um, we'll see what it looks like when the data is sitting in Elk, and then we are going to run some XOR playbooks. Here we're taking a look at the Palo Alto Firewall. We see that we've set up um, our, our syslog server as the name elk and then here's my IP uh, any port I want and we support TCP and UDP and so does uh, file beat on the receiving side so um, we're good to go here and then all we did is make a um, uh, sorry log forwarding profile here and we just see that we're pointing uh, these types of traffic to this server that I named elk right Nothing to it, but I'll show it to you. Okay. So now we're, we're, we're syslogging. So let's go take a look at our um, elk. So here we are in Kibana. Uh, this is part of elk, right? Kibana is like the screen scrape portion of it. And we've installed the PanW module already on the server. So when you do that, it automatically adds all these uh, these keywords for you. You don't have to. I, I didn't have to add anything manually, and uh, we we index on at timestamp. So this is a very important field. You're going to have to have that. But let's keep poking around a little bit, and I'll show you what the logs look like. Um, if we come here and go to logs, okay. Let's go back a bit in time. Uh, sure. Okay, um, these fields are all easy to customize. I just go to settings, and when I come down here, I can just say, oh, I want to see, I don't know, like, uh, you think of something, uh, you know, uh, I already have destination IP. Uh, how about country name? Does that add? Yep, apply. Let's go back and look at our logs. And we have a country. All right, pretty cool. You can live stream and all that does is keeps pulling it and looking for new data. Uh, well, I don't have any new data today. Uh, but these are the fields. So then you can drop down, you can drill in and it automatically parses all these values for you as you can see and there's plenty to key in on here too right there's your file beat uh, this automatically adds a filter which is nice right so that works we do have alerts uh, I'm still trying to figure out the alerts, but essentially I wanted to alert on threats. And uh, let's see, threat alerts. This is what a threat would look like. It's just saying, you know, when threat is it when when the type is threat, blah blah blah. You can kind of get a feel for it, right? And then it cuts to Gmail. Well, that's new. Gold license? Okay. Uh, and then let's go take a look at some graphs. Let's go back in time. Uh, there we go. And we can look at, uh, you know, simple source IP charts. Um, What's interesting here is that you can stack data. I can do URL categories and corresponding URL and break it out into a pie chart. So that the entire category of bad URLs is command and control and there's two objects inside of that category. And that's how the data is represented. Then we have our bad URLs. Oh no, sorry, this is my policy names, my actual uh, next gen firewall policy names and which, which ones are being used the most, right? Destination IPs, top users, I only have one user. Different app IDs. And this is uh, threats. 
and that's the type of threat. In this case, the number is 9999 because it's a test that I'm running. But on these different days, you can see what's happening in terms of threats. Right? So it's pretty straightforward. Now let's go take a look at what's called XOR. Okay, so in XOR, you will see that I have an integration. I'm integrating my XOR into Elastic. Take a quick look. I point it to 9200, which is Elastic, and I'm looking for type threat, okay? And once I have this set up and running, there's been zero today, but I've, I've had plenty come in here. So let's take a look at how this actually plays out. So this is going to pull, you know, every, I don't know how often actually, uh, out the rate, I think it's every five minutes, it should pull and look for that threat, that type of threat, okay? And then it will create an incident. Incident would look like this, right? Where a uh, malicious URL was detected by Jay Miller at this whatever source IP. All right, now if we walk through this, first off, we can see that there was a playbook that ran. And I wrote this playbook, there's nothing to it. Um, you know, I'm assigning it to an analyst. I'm checking virus total. Um, nothing fancy, but the point is, is that I can show you that I'm able to pull in all that data from Elastic, and it's all going to be under there's all these keys under here under incident. There's 72 items that I can work with when the incident first starts, um, and then I can enrich any of this data as I go, and that's what my playbook is for. Okay. Um, you know, destination IP. Maybe I want to enrich that. So that's what the playbook is for. I can automate a lot of these tasks that are, are mundane and, and uh, tedious. Okay, and then what you end up with is a war room and see I've enriched all this data. I talked about virus total, right? See about virus total, um, it's a test uh, domain, so it doesn't really count, okay? But um, these are the uh, observable subdomains. It'll give me an overall health um, as to whether it's, it's uh, benign or, or uh, malicious. Um, I rasterize the image of the test website so that you can't click on it, but the, uh, the SOC analyst would have an idea of what the data looks like. Um, here's all the information in a nice uh, table to markdown. Then I could add things to this evidence board. So what I do is I'll walk through and add this stuff to the evidence board. I'll come here. I'll say mark as evidence, uh, VT, right? Mark as evidence. And now it shows up on my evidence board, right? I can see the related incidents. So if there's similar source IPs, similar usernames, similar destination IPs, the machine learning inside of the product will cluster them all together and give you an idea what that looks like. And here's a look at the related incidents. This is the machine learning portion that will look at this particular case. This would be the center of the world, right, on uh, ticket number 857. And then we go, uh, you know, um, before and after 30 days in both directions, as you can see here. And you can see that there is, uh, if, if, if it's type of URL, then it's an orange. If it's uh, square, it's active. If it's circle, it's closed. And you can click on and figure out what the related incidents are. So it's a good indication if you're under some kind of uh, attack campaign, if you have a lot of tickets that all reference the same source IP, it's nice to visually put those together. Same thing here, this is called the canvas. This part's fairly amazing. Um, these are the cases, and these are the indicators on the right. And we've made a, a, a graph out of all this, and you can visually see what's happening, and you can move things around. And then what you do is you would just send it to the war room, because if you recall, that's where uh, we're, we're, it's sort of uh, we, we, we collect all of our, our intel and we decide whether we want to make it in, uh, put it on the evidence board or not. Okay, so this is XOR. It helps you automate your SOC uh, response. 
Uh, it can do anything from, uh, you know, incident response to even to onboarding new employees. Uh, the things that you don't like doing uh, as a part of your manual uh, tasks within a day can be automated. Thank you.